What is going on, everybody? Happy Friday. Not such a happy Friday for me, but she's did a little better. We're going to talk real quickly about his lineup in the 600 last night, and then we're going to jump into tonight's slate. One of the things that we always keep trying to do that we're, we're trying to remind people is that we're not just trying to talk to you about, hey, who to play that day. We're trying to get people actually better at DFS and to make you more profitable. So it's something that we should, you know, we want to touch on when we have wins and losses. And you could, Chiefs could talk about a little bit about this lineup real quick, and then we'll jump into this late tonight. How's that well, sound? more to the point, you know, and, and we talked about this. We had a site call uh, yesterday. And for those of you who have been following, just the ones that I've been doing myself, I mean, I, I'd like to, again, con continue to, again, teach you guys not just, you know, who to play on the slate, but try to create, like, kind of a repeatable process, right, that you can use like every day, you know, uh, to, to build, like, you know, I'm not saying you're going to win every day or whatever, just build kind of decent lives, just kind of like a routine that you can go through using our tools. Because listen, there's so much out there and so, so much, so little time in the day relative to the amount of time you could spend if you felt like it, mm -hmm. that I want, like, you should have some kind of process. And I think I'm probably a good example of that because listen, I'm like, like super swamped and busy with like a million things. Yet I still figured out a way to carve out time to do what I need to do to get get lineups done, you know. Mm -hmm. And I, this is what I do. And so when we do, when I do every once in a while, I want to do a video where I just go through the process. So so this happens because listen, it's twelve o'clock, and what we're going to say now is going to actually apply to tonight's slate almost zero percent of the time. Um, I shouldn't well, say well, that. Well, some of it will. Some I shouldn't say that. But 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 the point is is that is that I want to mix these videos in with more process videos and. The, the, the holy grail is going to be if we can combine the two, you know, make a process video that also applies to the slate. But we're, listen, we're working on it. Um, and absolutely. And then, and, and guys, any suggestions or feedback? We're always happy to hear it. Sheets, why don't you talk us through your. Yeah. Your so this was my lineup in the, in, in the 600. And, and I played, um, I played Bo Champ like everybody else. Um, I guess that's a good thing that everybody else played him, <laughs> I suppose. Right. Um, and he, uh, you know, he had zero pretty much. Uh, it was everybody, of course, came and said, of course, you have to play Jevin, Javon Carter. I mean, what are you, a moron? Why wouldn't you play Javon Carter? This is what makes good play, good DFS players versus bad ones. You guys are. I, I, did, I did play Javon Carter and I still lost. Oh, oh. <laughs> um, but it was kind of funny. Like just just before we went on the air, uh, you know, Bobby said, are you cashing that? What, we, what, uh, and I said, yeah. And even in Beauchamp, he said, he said, well, you had Luca. I'm like, no, nah, I didn't have Luca. So he said, who the hell did you have? I'm like. I don't know. Let's find out. Um, so I basically, the way I built this one was not, um, again, I don't use Saberson to build my big ones. And I just am kind of stubborn to play these, to kind of play middling builds. Um, that's just where I've been kind of just, that's what I've been playing. I know it's everything slate dependent or whatever, yeah. but I, for whatever, I, I thought it was more important to play, um, to play uh, Kyrie and, and Ben Simmons than, than, um, than the than Luca, for example, that's just the way I felt. You know, I, I felt it was much important, more important to get those guys in. And then I played, um, and I thought I, I didn't think Drew Holiday would be quite as as chalk. I thought he'd be chalky, but I think be quite as chalky. I was very surprised with with Scott. Not su surprised, but Scotty Barnes was kind of like the hoodoo here. Like actually, the three hoodoos I had were, were Vince, were were in my my thought process were Barnes, Nurkic, and Garlands. Um, I knew I didn't think Nurkic would be that high owned. And I knew nobody would play Garland, so I played him. But Barnes was the was the was was the key, right? Because he scored forty seven fantasy points at sixty seven hundred. Um, Vincent again, nothing nothing Just major. Touch on the Barnes thing real quick. What's interesting about that is that at least that Saberson ownership projections, and I think yours too. Even people had him projected a lot higher, but it was still because they couldn't adjust to some of the injury news and stuff. Yeah, but he was like, I mean, I saw him. I, Early in the day, he was projected as the highest player on on the slate. Well, it was weird, you know. So, 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 uh, you know, I, I because I had two guys in the late game, like Nurkic and Garland. Um, yeah. You know, I wasn't cashing like for quite a while, even though the guys were doing okay. You know, like Barnes doing okay, Vincent obviously smashed and and whatever. And then, and then these, and then what happened is because they're giving away these stupid rainmaker packs, it was like so. It was a little confusing because it says pay for two hundred ninety eight spots. And I was in like like one eightieth and it's cashing for zero. And it took me like an hour to figure out what the hell's going on. I'm like, how am I cashing for zero if it pays 298? And that was because the final 150 spots were actually paid in Rainmaker packs. So it, it so so that's why it was cashing for zero because I yeah. it was cashing for Rainmaker packs. I'm like, dude, I don't want to cash for a fucking Rainmaker, excuse me, for a Rainmaker pack because I don't even know what it is. Right. So I, I might as well just and so 
And so what happened is these guys started to do well enough, like Nurkic and Garland is kind of sneaking into the money. And I actually got up into like a top hundred at one point. And then I'm sitting there and I'm like, all I got to do is make sure that like, because if this Luka game goes into overtime, I'm like obviously screwed. It went into overtime and then it went into double overtime, but just not enough people had it, I guess. I don't know. So I just kind of, kind of hung on there. So somehow, some, somehow, yeah. some way we, we, we played the Beauchamp with no Luka and somehow managed to squeak in there. So I guess the lesson to be learned is, is kind of the Barnes thing is that, is that when you're playing this type of tournament, you only need like one, you know, like one low owned guy. And I disagree and, with that in general, because I think that when you, okay, I, I would agree with that if you're playing a bunch of entries, cause you have a better chance of getting that one guy. But I okay. think it's much easier to try to find the multiple low on plays, which you did have in this lineup. But and 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 more to the point, I don't think you could have won a tournament last night. I don't think anybody won tournaments. I haven't double checked yet without Luca, but I doubt it. <laughs> but I but I hear you. I hear what you're saying though, and and um, yes, yeah, you know. Oh, so they they had the stack here, the Luca Lebron stack. That yeah, and they did it really idiotically, and they didn't leave themselves. <laughs> they didn't put them in the right spots. Um, so that's and kind the of Javon, and the Javon Carter. Yep. Um, which wasn't all that off. I mean, if, if I combine my two lineups, that's basically what it made up was that that I winning lineup. I didn't, even think, I didn't even think of playing Javon Carter. It's so funny. I just oh, didn't yeah. even dawn on me. Yeah, he was my my lone guy that I liked. Um, anyway, we can jump onto today's slate. It was it was definitely like uh it's been a little frustrating. I can't get the right piece. Like I said, all the right when you see all the right pieces, like between your two lineups, if you enter two big ones, and I've got a bunch of other ones, but like you see everybody in the winning lineup is in your lineup, it's kind of frustrating when you don't get that. Um, yeah, yeah. You, you can't win, but that just means that you know I've got to keep going back at it, and uh, we're on to a big slate tonight. So, and we're, 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 and we're on to the Indiana Pacers. Let's go. Okay, yeah. Well, is that the, so that's what you got first. No, but we'll get there. Very uh, soon. We're going to, to, to Detroit, right? Oh no, no. I actually to, have Knicks Washington first. Okay, let's do Knicks. All right, why don't you talk about your Knicks in Washington? Uh, not much, honestly. Like right now, I have. Have Randall as being the top spend up, and and I just, I think I have a couple of guys better than him. Like I prefer, well, we'll talk about them later, I guess. But I prefer Sabonis, uh, whatever. But, but I, I think Randall's is okay. Um, well, he's low owned, so I guess that's not bad. As far as Washington, um, I don't know exactly who is playing again. Um, yeah, that's a big one. <laughs> Porzingis is st- I haven't questioned, but I don't think I have him projected. So we're just gonna have to wait and see. And then um value side, I mean currently not much, but again, if all these Washington guys are out again, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to revisit. Yeah, it's um I- I'm not all that that interested at first glance. I'm really frustrated because you know, le- at least cashing in the 2500 I would have cashed the other night, but I-, I went with the Ruri over the Abdi after some thought just because I thought he'd be lower on which he was I played, I played them both you played them both well that that, that would have been better than what I said <laughs> so by yeah least. that was good for 433rd place I think to me so hey I, I you know what though but I mean that one piece is what, what kind of killed me in that one so anyway but I, I I just think as of right now there's nothing that stands out as priorities I think that as always with the Knicks I'm never going to argue if you want to play any of them because the minutes are so secure that anybody can go completely off at their price. I mean, all of these guys have 60 fantasy point upside uh, in Randall, Barrett, and Brunson. But for me on this slate, it's just not not standing out at all. I just wanted to see if I could right. find it. There you yeah, go. This was, my, this was my 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 2,500. Actually, I got 276. That wasn't that bad. I just, I just want to remember what the, what I did there. Oh, that was the DeJounte Murray. Oh, oops. <laughs> that was, that was, yeah, that was DeJounte I mean, Murray, 24 fantasy points. That was that was that problem. Okay. It was partly that problem, but it was also the Rui because I, I have a friend who won one of the big tournaments with DeJounte Murray. So are you serious? About it. Yeah, but I mean he it was 60 he in, in that tournament he was 80 something percent owned. It was a big uh it was a big single entry, it was like a 1500 single entry. Wow. So you could get away with it when you were 88 percent or 80 whatever percent owned. Anyway, we can move on to the next one today. But I, I was just happy I was able to pull that up like really fast. That was pretty good. Yeah, that was you're getting you're getting super quick with this. I noticed last night when we were on our call. Um just jumping around the sites. All right, Atlanta, Indiana. Um, yeah, so, so here we go. Go ahead, Chiefs. Right. So Halliburton, I guess, is out. This is why all these guys are popping, I suppose. So um, take your pick. Uh, I currently have McConnell and Nebhard kind of tied uh, as the best play. 
Then I have uh, Matherin at 4,800 is next best. And then Miles Turner. That's the way these guys kind of rank for me. Um, and Atlanta, um, I have a Congo at 5,600 as a decent value. Mm-hmm. And that's pretty much – I'm not really getting to too much Trey. I have I have other guys better than Trey at that same price and at that same position. So uh, I'm not really getting to him. So for me, I guess it's a Kangu if I had to uh, on Atlanta. And then, you know, a bunch of, bunch of pacers. It's like a perfect Jante Murray troll game, isn't it? Yep. <laughs> it feels like it feels like that's what it's going to be like you know what i mean like it's just betray it's, back especially yeah exactly and he right. did it he did well he did actually he scored 60 back to back once with throughout trey once with trey but um anyway um uh, yeah i'm <laughs> I, I really wanted something from atlanta i think a kongu is my favorite if i had to pick uh sort of been underwhelming in in what he like he, he you know but he he has the ceiling and it's a it's kind of a fun good matchup where these like at least these have to be on the court um you know I, I don't know so I'm, I'm just sort of trying to figure out if I can get a run back because I do think you have a lot of things to to sort through here the problem is you still have a lot of guys who are very capable guards and whatnot but I think that we I think that the weird thing to me and I understand that McConnell was out when Nemhard went nut went nuts before but I think Nemhard is the better play than McConnell right now. And I think, I mean, look, both of them, I don't think you need to, to split them up um, is if they're both starting. And I, I mean, I, I really think that you, you want to get some, some of both those guys. We saw, we, we saw what Nemhard did without, without a uh, Halliburton early in the year. And I think that we could, you know, at least take a shot back at that, especially as the early looks, he's not getting much ownership, which is kind of odd. Um, Aaron Neesmith and Buddy Heald, um, I think are both really interesting, assuming that they assuming that Neesmith plays. Turner's still questionable, and Neesmith is as well as O'Shea Brissett. So keep that in mind because if any of those guys are out, it's going to open up even more. Um, but I have it rated right now: Nemhard, McConnell, Matherin. I'm sorry, Heald, Matherin. But I think Matherin's a really good play. I just think that with rookies, you get when who get chalky, you get you get like a little bit, um, you get a little bit stuck on trying to. You know, I don't know. Like, the, I don't want to play them chalky because there's they're just too much of a bus patch for them. But I do like Matherin just in a vacuum tonight. So I have it in that order. Uh, Nemhart, McConnell, uh, Ma- uh, Heald, Matherin, Neesmith, and then Jalen Smith if you wanted to go that far down. But I, th- I would say keep an eye out for the starting lineup for this one because it is going to matter. Well, fortunately, it's 7 o'clock game, so we'll have it. And, and, and Miles Turner gets ruled out again. Um, then obviously Jalen Smith, probably among others, would be a oh, yeah. pretty strong play. Um, do you have any issues with playing any of those uh, guards together, like McConnell and Nebhard? It depends on who's starting. Um, so it's a really tough question. And I, 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 you know, in the past, they always started McConnell here, and I think they will. But I, I think that if you had to break them up, I guess like Nemhard and Matherin or Heald and Matherin, but even those I feel like are fine together, but maybe not McConnell, Nemhard and Matherin. Maybe that's too much unless we get the guys announced out. Even that feels okay to me. So I think you're playing between one and three of these guys and we're and, and it's going to, you know, we'll, we'll figure it out by the end of this, this, this early breakdown. But I, I, th- I do think this is like, you know, a spot you're going to have to get right. So I'm going to stick to the guys I have in my order unless something changes. And if for any reason McConnell's not starting, Nemhard is going to be a near lock for me. Yeah. Because he'll have the ball in his hands. Um, all right. You ready to move on? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, New Orleans against Detroit. Um, I don't know. I, McCollum and Valanchunas seem, seem reasonable enough. Um, uh, on Detroit, I mean, Diallo at 4K is just not going to be good enough to f- battle all the other better value at the same price, honestly. So uh, I'm not going to go to that. Sadiq Bey had a really he had a really good game the other day. But again, I just think the Indiana value and, and some others, even Chicago, is probably better than this. So we're probably not going to get to too much of this. It may, maybe, maybe some might fall into some mid-range play of like McCollum or um, – or or Valanciunas. 
Uh, yeah, I kind of like the like the idea of trying to get to some Detroit here. Um, I don't know exactly how I'm going to do it because I think Bay is like I think Bay Hayes. I think Bay then Hayes, then Ivy, then Bogdanovich, then Burks. I'm sorry. Then assuming that you know, questioning whether Stewart plays, but if Stewart plays, I would be very very happy to be well, well overweight on Detroit. So. I actually look at these guys as all pretty good, but I think that like, like, I mean, it's a good matchup in terms of pace and and, and scoring and everything. Um, and they're playing at home. So I, I hope they can keep it close, but I like the idea of getting to some of this. So I, I think that it's just a, it's a matter of which one. I, um, and, and for me, the first look would be Sadiq Bay or Killian Hayes. Um, hard to find much to love on new Orleans, but I, Joe Val always has a ceiling. By the end of the day, my guess is he'll be low owned. Uh, early in the day, he's looking like he's going to have some reasonable ownership. If he is low owned, in fact, by the end of the day, I think we should go ahead and uh, consider playing him. Um, and I just don't, I just can't quite make enough sense of the other guys to to get there. But um, McCollum is always, obviously could always go off, but I think at 9,400, I'm okay passing today as of right now. All right, we, we got next. Uh, you got what golden state san antonio yeah i gotta tell you i have no problem just for fun try, trying it uh you know Cur curry could oh. score 70 fantasy points this game he also could play 26 minutes he could you? also play 26 minutes and score 38 minutes um, 31 minutes in his, in his first game back by the way so yeah 31 his first game back but you know this is uh this is the track meet you know what i mean like this is uh 30, 30, 32 minutes in Sacramento is like 40 minutes elsewhere sometimes. Um, so, oh, this is not Sacramento. This is San Antonio. What am I th What am I thinking about? Hey, say, hey same difference. <laughs> it's actually well, more so true about San Antonio. I didn't even think about that. I, I, was, I was all ready to, to, to recommend the freaking Curry, De'Aaron Fox run back oh, situation. Let's go, yeah, yeah, boy, that'd be maybe maybe do it anyway, just because I was about to throw in the, in the ecosystem even though they're not playing each other. I mean, maybe that's not the worst idea in the world. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, yeah, I mean, I have to tell you, if I get like 10% Curry, I'm not going to be upset about it. Yeah, I um, get that. You know, I think I think he's just as, you know, good, just as good at, as Shea, at Shea at the same price. Um, well, remember, we used up a lot of the studs last night. We don't have the same studs to play tonight in some cases. Right. Yeah. So, so um, that, that makes sense. I'm looking at these up. 10Ks, I'm looking at, at Shea, I'm looking at Curry, I'm going back to Trey Young. You know, they're all the same price and they're all very, you know, they're all sort of similar in a way. Um, uh, so listen, if I get to some curry, I'll plan. I don't know if I'm going to like force myself to do it. Like, what, like you said, I mean, I don't think there's 40 minute minute upside. You know what I mean? Like I think of anything that's on the lower side. Um, San Antonio. I, uh, Keldon Johnson, I guess. That's pretty much I think all I have. Um, Sohan is kind of like flattened out recently. Um, he had a couple of good games that he's been kind of pedestrian. Um, yeah, so I mean, yeah, listen, not, 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 nothing major. That is a freaking huge total. Look at this, like two, two forty. I guess you're right. I guess San Antonio is kind of like, kind of like Sacramento in that regard. I, mean, I guess they, 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 they track me it up a little bit too. So, mm -hmm. um, I don't know. What do you think of this game? Yeah, it's it, you know it's interesting because the Warriors are favored by whatever eight, nine, nine, nine and, and a half. Yeah. And they have won two games on the road this year, or maybe three. Um, they're one of the worst. I think they're the worst road team in the NBA this year, including everybody. So it's kind of an interesting, like, you know, you could certainly, it wouldn't be surprised, that surprising if it stayed close. Um, everybody looks okay for me from San Antonio. Nobody like a must have. I, I don't mind the idea of Bomet Sohan, as I mentioned. The kid's 20 years old. He's going to get better and better. He's really, if you watch the Spurs play, like you'll yeah. see Sohan bringing the ball up, playing point, and then you'll see him playing center. He's got like the kind of game that is going to translate really well in the long run once he gets a shot down and some other things. And I think he will in San Antonio. But I just I think he's always a good wild card play um, in this price range because he'll get low owned. And I think Keldon Johnson is is completely reasonable. Uh, if you're going to play Curry, I would suggest you probably do want to run back, whether that be Curry, Keldon Johnson. Even a guy like Romeo Langford, to add, if you're using other value also and you're double spending up, then I think you could include it, Romeo Langford into that mix. And um, and even Podol is reasonable, but nobody who stands out as being a, a great play for me in this game in general. But it is a track meet. 
Um, maybe maybe we reconsider that a little later. And one thing to note that Draymond sometimes has better, like it, his his numbers. While he gets more usage without Curry in general, he, his games his game tends to play a little bit better. So his his numbers his projections always drop when Curry comes back. But this might be a good Draymond spot to get you know. But even that, you're looking at like 40 to 45. You're not looking at like a monster game most of the time. I and mean, he hasn't put up like 60 in a long time. Um, that's the old Draymond days. But anyway, that's that that's that's pretty much it's pretty much a pass for me, but something I could certainly see like playing some borderline plays at later on if I don't like anything. And next we got uh OKC Chicago. Sheets, uh, this is a weird one back to back here um for for OKC and I'm just surprised that we like my natural instinct whenever OKC is playing a back to back is to hey somebody's gonna rest. Um, I don't know who it'll be, <laughs> and at the same time they're playing competitive basketball. They still have their their top pick who they you know will come in next year. Like so so maybe tanking. It's, it's just sort of like an in between tanking team. So I'm just curious. And, and again, we should hopefully have this news, but don't be surprised if after that seven Eastern time lock. You hear some weird OKC guys are ruled out. It just happens a lot. Um, so as of right now, the only one who really stands out for me is Giddy. Uh, never have a problem with Shea. I don't love the back-to-back -back at that price um, on the road. And on the Bulls, who tend to struggle with bad teams and beat the hell, the Bulls are like the best team against good teams and the worst team against bad teams, which makes them just like a, they're like a below average team that could beat anybody. It's really weird. Um, Levine is 9,200. I don't know, man. I don't know if I can do it. Um, I'm, I'm tempted. I, I think. I think. I think you can. No, he's like he's going to be thirty five percent on though. And well, I, then, then you can. I mean, <laughs> that's that, that's that's the issue I have. But I, but it does run through him. But maybe the idea is to do what you know. Maybe play Kobe White at a third the ownership and hope that he gets hot or 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 uh, or the lower own Vooch. But even that doesn't. Feel, I mean, it's a great matchup for Vooch. Well, I I think Vooch is a great play. Yeah. Uh, um, it's, it, I like that. I like all of it, but it's like it also feels like okay, we're we're spending a lot for a team that's going to play 10, 11 guys. They've got you know, Dragic gets hot. That takes away all your fantasy points for like a quarter because he does that sometimes. Oh. Kobe White does that too. So it, there is ways for Levine and, and Vooch to bust, and I'm trying to find ways for them to bust because I don't want to play the mega chalk at you know prices that are getting to be a little bit uncomfortable. Well, I would say this that that I mean. Even if they play 17 guys, I think Levine plays max minutes. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think that. Yeah, but it's just the usage, though. I mean, like, if, if Kobe White, we've seen it before this year a lot. Like, with, if Kobe White or Dragic get hot, um, they, they 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 end up taking over, especially Dragic. When, I mean, it's, it's rare, but, like, it, it takes up a quarter, you know? So you lose a quarter of production. And while Levine has been unbelievable lately, like, just keep in mind he's been really efficient, too. Like, I mean, he was 15 for 28 in his last game, and he put up 51. At ninety two hundred, I would certainly take fifty one, but it's not like I go. You know, oh, you're not, not necessarily necessary. you're not necessarily winning the slate with fifty one. Right, exactly. So, so I'm I'm definitely look. They're both they're both on my list, but I'm trying to find a way to fade them, or at least one of them. Um, Levine clearly stands out as the to me the the, the better play, um, but I do think Vooch is a really strong play also, and I think that if you're not playing those guys, you want to get some exposure to Kobe White. Um, I don't think I'm going to get to the Sunmu, but that, that's I'm just trying to think out loud and get and get different. A yeah, bit. I think I think you can. I think you know, obviously, maybe not obviously. Obviously, you could, you could, you can mini stack this a little bit. You know, uh, one of the one of the Chicago guys with one of the OKC guys, that being you know Shane Giddy as you mentioned, and or Levine and Gooch, as you mentioned. So you could you could you could definitely make that work. Yeah, absolutely. That's the thing about all this Atlanta stuff. You know what I mean? Like you could just make it. You, you and with with nobody, you know, with no Luca at twelve k on the slate. You know, you you uh, you you can get pretty much what what you want with using those using those Indiana guys. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, all right. You know, plus before we go on, you, you know, something that we didn't. I mean, I, I talk about every time this happens. I don't think we gave it enough enough weight. What do you think going back to the Indiana game of stacking that game? Um, and, yeah, and I, I talked about it. Oh, I, you did. Okay. I just, I just don't. I, I think that that, that that Trey belongs in the same category as all of these other guys do. Right. I think that he might make the most sense just because you get the game stack element. Right. Okay. Um, but 
am I nervous about it a little bit? Like, and, and I think, I think Trey and a Kongwu, you could play and then you could play with three or four Pacers and then spend up somewhere else. I think you could do that pretty easily. Dude, all these guys are out again for Phoenix, huh? Yep. <laughs> well, well, at least Aiton is questionable. Oh, he's expected to play at least. Yeah, like I, think eight, I think Aiton plays tonight. Yeah, it's just expected to play. Um, uh, I don't have them projected quite yet, so I'm not exactly sure um, what to do there. Um, I, I've got them projected, and it's not it's not as pretty as you might think. No, I, I, mean, I do have the Phoenix guys projected, and I kind of don't like anybody, if you want to know the truth. Um, the best guy I have is like a pretty weak Dwayne Washington play. Um, that's pretty much it. Uh, and on the other side of the ball, I, I'm not I'm not sitting too much in the Minnesota thing either. Um, I don't know. What, what do you What do you think here? Yeah, I I I think you could make an argument for these guys even at their their cheaper tags. Um, I also think that even Aiton is probably being a little bit under projected. So I think that's I, I'd be open to that, but not overly excited about any of it. Um, Washington is a heat check guy who really struggled. Like he was horrible, horrible yeah. the other night. Um, I mean, in real life, I was watching that game and it was it was hard to watch. I think that my, Mikhail Bridges is, is certainly in play, and I think that Saric is okay. Um, but it is weird that we don't have anything that we feel like we really want to do here. I, I think that it would be nice, you know, to, obviously it'd be nice to know their starting lineup, but um, I assume they'll start Saric alongside Aiton. They did a Landale a few times back before. So I, I think Saric is probably the best play here um, from a point for dollar standpoint, but it's, it's just not, nothing that I'm overly excited about. And I might need to revisit this one later because it feels like we should want to do something on the Phoenix side. I'm not doing the terrain Prince thing as of right now. You're in Minnesota, the Minnesota side. I'm in Minnesota. If Kyle Henderson or Anthony Edwards are out, I absolutely will. Um, and then I, I am always a little bit of a sucker for Anthony Edwards and I think they're starting to turn the, the reins over to him more and more. So that's pretty much all I have in this one. I think Gobert is fine. I, I don't, I don't love it. I don't hate it, but I'm, I'm okay with Gobert. Um, Terrain Prince himself is questionable, by the way. Um, yeah. So watch, yeah. watch for, watch for McDaniels, I think at 4,900. Yeah. I, I like him a little bit, but again, like all these QT, I don't think, I mean, Edwards plays every game. He's not going to say, um, but Kyle Anderson might, He's really hurt though. Like he got taken out of the last game and then they brought him back late and he just went nuts, but it was too late. Like I, we lost two quarters of him. Um, yeah, but I, but I hear you. I think he'll play too. All right. Uh, Orlando, Utah. Um, a lot of, a lot of good players for Orlando now. Um, hard to find guys that, that you really want to like get overweight on uh, just because the number of bodies, if there was one, I think it'd be Wendell Carter. Um, I never have a problem with Paolo because he's going to just have some huge outlier games. Feels like a tough spot um, going to Utah, but Orlando's played a lot better. And I actually like since the, you know, they were one in whatever a million, they've actually been, in, you know, much, much better in real life. Um, but I, I'm, I'm really not that high on this game overall. I think that Beasley and Clarkson are OK with Sexton coming back, though, that kind of lowers them a little bit. So I'm mostly like off of this game. How yeah, I have, almost, I have almost nothing. The close, I, I, you hit the the two. I mean, Beasley, you know, listen, gun to my head, who's the best point per dollar play on the Utah today? You know, you didn't have to prioritize any other team. I guess it would be Beasley or maybe Kessler, just because he's a center. Um, so so Kessler and Beasley would be my two favorites, and I don't think I'm going to get to either of them. And Orlando, like you said, I mean, all these guys are back, I, I think. So they just, it's not, it's not the same as it was. It was only, only a week ago, it seems they had seven guys on the floor, right? Remember right. the Terrence Ross with the 40 minutes and all that stuff. Um, and it's just probably just a pass for me as well. Yeah. Weird. We have all these games, but nothing that's, you know, crazy standing out for me outside of Indiana. Um, all right. Uh, what do you got first? The Sacramento? You got, sec you got a. I got I got Nicole Yoko to score 59 fantasy points in 28 minutes. The other day. I know. Um <laughs> Um, this is what I have. So first of all, look at, look at Mr. Somebody finally put up a ceiling the other day. Uh, Kawhi Leonard, finally, huh? Nine of, uh, nine of 12. Yeah. Uh, nine rebounds, four assists, four steals. And that's, 
that's uh that's uh that's a that's a Kawhi. I'm surprised you only had one block in this line. You know what I mean? I thought yeah. I'd, maybe you have a couple more. But um anyway, I'm not playing him in 9900. But um uh, I am getting quite a bit of Terrence Mann at 4300. Um so just as kind of a random one off. Oh, I probably not ran. I bet you what's so Paul George out? Yeah, there you go. Okay. Because yeah. I'm wondering why all these guys are showing up. So Covington at thirty at thirty three hundred, um, he's showing up for me as well. And I guess that's why maybe you should be playing, uh, uh, or at least considering playing Kawhi even at ninety nine hundred. So with Paul George out, Kawhi and the other guys I mentioned, Terrence Mann and uh, no, I already forgot. And on the Denver side, Jokic is fine. Eleven six, he's gonna you know top projected player on the slate. Um, and he's obviously pretty well rested coming off of 28 minutes. Um, the spread here is only, I mean, the Clippers are favored by two somehow. Um, I don't know anything about basketball, I guess. I couldn't imagine. Um, that's so funny. Uh, I don't even know the team's record. Is Denver's De- is Denver just not doing well this year? They're, they're in first place. They have the best record. So why, why are the Clippers looks like a two point favorite? It's a good question. Um, it's actually a really good question. Uh, especially with, with Paul George out, well, uh, yeah, we'll see. Maybe, maybe Jokic is sitting. Maybe, um, I I don't see why the Clippers are favored here. They just, oh, I mean, I just watched them play last time because I had a lot of pieces in the game. The score at halftime was like sixty seven thirty two, and they just did. The Clippers didn't even bother bringing any of their top, their their guys back for the second half. Um, they it was it was they were up by you know thirty five or whatever in that game. And they ended up winning by 31, I think. But I have no idea where this is coming from. Um, that, that, that is this questionable due to right injury risk management. Who? Probably, you know, he's probably going to sit. You know what I mean? Like, it's, if well, you had to get number is telling us he's going, His number is telling us he's going to sit. Yeah. Amazing. So if we don't have that information, shouldn't we speculate and then play Jamal Murray and or Michael Porter Jr.? Yeah. Um, I mean... Or at least at least leave leave a spot, right? Yeah, De- I, I just have Denver down as a big question mark because I I think that if you have Murray, yeah, I mean, and then even like even like guys like Bruce Brown like would be involved. I, I really think that's I mean the, obviously the I think Jamal Murray and Porter are the top two, but I, yeah, I am a little. I mean, and even even the projection on Jokic being fifty five feels a little low. So I, I just feel I, like- I have the Clippers at two and a half point favorite. Literally every sports book in the United States. Yeah, which does make me feel like someone's going to sit. Um, hopefully, we hear about it early, or hopefully, we don't, because I can actually take a stand on that. So I, I have Denver with a big question mark right now. I don't know what to do. Um, what do you think about the Terrence Mann thing from the Clippers? And- Terrence Mann, so I, I have it ranked um, Mann, Powell, Covington for value, and I don't mind if you get to a little Batum as well. So who's the second guy? Who's the second guy you said? Norman Powell. Powell. Okay. Um, so I, I do think that's a priority though, is to try and get some exposure to these Clippers, and I and and not in the form of Kawhi for me at the ninety nine hundred. It seems a little bit a little bit hard for me to to jump on that, especially because I think people will chase. And there's not a ton of obvious value. So, so like playing Kawhi versus a, yeah, I guess, I guess, I mean, with the other value we, with other expend ups we have, maybe he is in play, especially if Jokic is out. Um, if Jokic is in, by the way, I think we should go ahead and play Jokic. <laughs> He's better than all the other spend ups we have by a pretty good amount. Um, but I think that you have it like man, I, like I have it man, Powell, Covington, Batum. And then I don't even mind Marcus Morris because um, they will go small a little bit here and try and you know take Jokic away from the basket. So I I, I was going to initially recommend Zubac, but I'm a little concerned that they don't. The Clippers do it a little bit different. Like if 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 they see a big on the other side, that means they're going small even more. <laughs> you know that's that's just what they what they what their what their mo has sort of been. All right. So this last game, I I believe my projections have to be broken. Um, actually, that's maybe not broken, but shouldn't all these Houston? I actually they're projecting okay with Kevin Porter Jr. out. Shouldn't all these Houston guys like look really good? Um, that that that'd be my initial just gut reaction. Um, I'm seeing like KJ Martin with with a six X projection. I don't, I, you know, he's not my favorite though. I see Eric Gordon. I guess so. He's like almost six X. I don't like him too much either. Um, in general, right? So so Tate, I have him. 
I don't want to play the other guys though. I kind I kind of want to play the Jabari Smith, and I kind of want to play the um, the Jalen Green. Like those are those are the guys I kind of I want I want the, the full complete ball hogs. You know like that really want to just like to really just want to shoot every time they touch the ball. Uh, I shouldn't say that the other Houston guys aren't like that also, but I, don't know, I just I just have the sense that those guys are more dynamic. And listen, I I, I, I thought I was speaking about this earlier. But uh, I'm getting to this eventually. Sacramento is a place that that shots do get fired, you know, and, mm-hmm. and fast breaks do happen, and and the pace gets it's really really high. It is a ten point spread, so you have to worry about that a little bit. But um, I also like Sangoon, and uh, and on the Sacramento side, God forbid this game stays close. You got Fox and Sabonis, both of whom can score seventy fantasy points in a spot like this. Maybe, may, okay, maybe Fox can't score seventy, but. Yeah. Um, but oh maybe uh, I don't know. But but this game can certainly freaking go off. So uh, as a matter of fact, I think it's a very reasonable total to bet the over at two thirty eight. I, I I just every time I watch Houston play, it feels like no defense is playing being played. Every time I watch Sacramento play, I shouldn't say no defense being played. It just feels like the ball is always moving, you know, up the court. Right. Um, so I, I I actually think it's a pretty good over at two thirty eight. I think that's pretty pretty easy actually. Um, uh, and like I said, I think that uh, these Houston guys with Kevin Porter Jr. with him off the court, and these guys have to get bumps. But it's just a question of how, how you want to play them, I suppose. Yeah, they they definitely got price bumps a little bit, which is not a little bit a little bit less comfortable, but not 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 like crazy price bumps. Um, so I think that like just it's interesting. So Sabonis, we just saw this matchup the other night. Uh, Sabonis has his way with Shangun, and Shangun has his way on the other side, but only gets to play twenty eight minutes. So. Um, I, I think this is a great game stack to go with the early value that we talked about. I do love Sabonis as a spend up here. Uh, without foul trouble, it's really hard for me to see him failing in a big way. Maybe you could say, okay, well, he's not putting up 70s as much as these other guys are. Those could come easily. I mean, the last game, even al- alone, um, he played a lot of minutes, but like they didn't need him to, to initiate everything because everybody else started, like, was, start- was they were just killing him. And Sabonis is a safe, like, I feel like he's a safe 50 to 65 range like so which i don't feel about basically any of the other spend-ups so i do like sabonis um i'm fine with fox i the way fox has been playing it's interesting because he really doesn't like he really does try to be a distributor and, and mostly just like you know share the offense around and then in the fourth quarter he's the leading fourth quarter scorer in the nba so you kind of need the game to is that true yep wow um, at least he was until I don't know what what's happened. Meanwhile, with meanwhile, did you see freaking Lillard last night? Yeah, that was crazy. But still not enough. Crazy. Unbelievable. He was the. I mean, it was nuts and and a tough matchup too. And you know, he's he's just unbelievable when he gets going. Um, but anyway, I, I like the idea of maybe getting some some Jalen Green. I, I think that KJ Martin. I do like him actually. Um, I don't think I'm going to play Eric Gordon here, but like, even like the value, he's at least hitting 20 every game. I'm just saying, if you wanted to use like a reserve spot in case there's any news later, like Jokic, right. which could flee up something. Cause they may end up instead, like, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not dying to play Zeke Nanaji if he starts, but like, it would be interesting to see what they do with Denver starting wise. Cause would they start Aaron Gordon at the five against the Clippers who like to go small? I don't think so. Anyway. Um, so I, I, I like Martin, uh, Jalen green. If I'm not playing Martin, I think that, uh, Deshaun Tate is probably the the next one for me. Um, but this is this is the game that I'd like to stack with the value from Indy. Um, and you know, like I said, just maybe maybe you could do it a bunch of different ways. I like the you know, I, Shangun and Green in this kind of a matchup, you could play together. Um, you could play either one of them at low ownership and play KJ Martin or Tate with potentially Jabari or something like that. And then, and then run it back with a uh, bonus. I think that's completely reasonable. And I also think Harrison Barnes has been like, like quietly been really, you know, solid, nothing special, but like he's mostly in the thirties. Um, it's a good matchup, but I, I, I don't think I want to necessarily go that far, but I might consider it for a game stack. So this is, this is definitely the game where I want to have the most exposure outside of Indiana. So l- let me tell you what, what, I'm trying to instruct the people here, like on on how to build lineups. So, so a couple of ways again that you can that I think about dealing with the Indiana stuff. You can either just pile them all in, run it back with Atlanta guys, and just be done with it, right? Or you could use those to make other kind of like stacks worth it. Like if you want to, like you say, play like a few Houston's and a few Sacramento's, right? 
and then you can run it. Then you can just use Indiana from a salary perspective to make that work. Or again, the other way you can use that value is just so that you can just make good uh, kind of like individual plays across the day, you know? Right. Um, um, but it, it, you're going to have to play somebody. From, you, you, no matter how you make your lineups, one, of them, one maybe even two of those Indiana guys are going to be in most of them. Yeah, I have Indiana. So I have Indiana at one to three of those guys, and I'm open to four if you want to do a run back. Um, right, let's, have, let's have fun. Hold on. We'll, let's. Uh, I'll do a Saberson build here, and let's just see what again we would get now. This is like the Sheets version of Sheets early builds, right? Um, which, That's by cool. the way, if you go, we haven't seen this yet. You know, if you're just watching the YouTube video for the first or second time, one thing Bobby does like every day, um, like earlier in the day, but late enough that, it, you know, it's relevant is he puts like kind of his early builds. Like if like the slate were to lock like now, what he'd probably be looking at. And it's as close as you're going to get to like actual like plays from us. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, at this early in the day. Um, so I would definitely do that. Uh, check that out. But this is kind of what Saberson would do based on current projections. And and not surprisingly, you know, 95% Nibar, 90% McConnell. Obviously, no issues with playing them together. Uh, Levine, uh, Mann, Sabonis, all the guys that we kind of mentioned. One thing I kind of like to look at is of the 150 lineups, 25% of them had four pacers in them. Interesting. Yeah, which – well, I'm presuming it's four pacers. It's four of somebody. I'm presuming yeah. it's four pacers. Um, and then another 20% of them had – well, actually, another 35% of them had three. So uh, that is something interesting. And the reason I mention it with respect to Sabersim is that, you know, one of the things Sabersim does that the other the other optimizers don't is account for the the question of should I play X Y Z together with X Y Z? You know, when you when you use the other optimizer, you have to like put these rules in and say I don't I want to play max one of these guys or max one of these guys. But what what they do over here is is like you I click on for example like Neemhard. And it'll actually show how he correlates to these other guys. And this is basically, honestly, just kind of Sabres and flexing, showing that they've done this work in the background. You know what I mean? So so what the idea is that if they come up with a lineup that has the two of them together, then they factored in that question of can you play them together? Right. Um, so that's that that is somewhat interesting. So your your instinct about playing them together is supported by the algorithm as well. So that's that's something. Yeah. Yeah. Um so, and, and I just want to keep, you know, everybody to keep in mind, keep in mind that that Clippers line, as Sheets pointed out, is is extremely suspicious, and it does make me feel like there might be something happening later with Jokic that we don't know. What about. you could do, I mean, like you really want to do something is just play the Clippers right now, like play the two and a half, because if if, if, if Jokic does in fact actually get rolled out, it's worth going to be worth a couple more points, you know. Yeah. Um, but then again, if he's playing, maybe if he goes to pick him, I don't know. Let's see. Yeah, it's actually it, it is it's 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 interesting one, but you you have other pivots if you want to play guys late. Like if you want to play Murray and Porter speculatively, you can switch it over to the Sacramento Houston game if you want to. You could you have the Clippers on the other side that you can you could use to switch over or play an addition. I really like the late games today. I think that's what I'm coming to outside of the Indiana and maybe some Detroit. That's pretty much where I'm at on this slate. But I will post my core plays once I go through everything again. I will post my early builds. And uh, let's have a good day, everybody. I have a question after you stop recording, Bobby. Yeah. All do right. Do you want to do and anything?